Jesus, thank you for another Sunday. Thank you, Lord, that you brought us to Sunday school. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us this time to listen to the word of God. Come and help us. We want to be like Daniel at the end of our lesson so that we can always pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, class. I hope you had a wonderful week. How many animals do you remember? I'm going to remind you one of them because today we have a very special lesson. Are you ready to listen to the sound that I'm going to make? Get ready. Roar! What does that sound remind you of? Yes, a lion. Can you see that lion? It has something to do with our lesson today. Do you remember the title? The Den of Lions. Can you say it after me? Den of Lions. Do you know what that means? It means a place where lions are kept. So many lions. Let's read the text to remind you what we are going to learn about. We are going to learn about a man called Daniel. You remember we learned something about Daniel last week? Yes, so we are continuing the story of Daniel. But today, something terrible happened. Are you ready? Open your Bibles, Daniel chapter 6. I'm going to read some verses. Daniel chapter 6, I'll read verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred among the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Verse 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion, no fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. I will jump to verse 11. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Uh, verse 16. Then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. I will end there. I hope you got that. Do you know what happened in this story? Because Daniel was a very good boy, a very good man from what we learned last week. He purposed in his heart that he wanted to please God all the time. So Daniel, he had a system of, or, or a habit of praying three times a day. How many times did I say? One, two, three times. You would pray in the morning. You would pray in the afternoon. You would pray in the evening. He was always doing that. Always praying. So when he became one of the presidents, some people were not very happy because the king promoted him to be the chief among the presidents. So some people were jealous. They were not happy. They started looking for anything that Daniel would do wrong. They were searching, searching, searching for that wrong thing that Daniel does. They couldn't find any. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? He couldn't say a wrong thing. He wasn't doing any wrong thing. He wasn't. They couldn't find it. The only thing they could find is Daniel praying. He was always praying. No matter the problems that were happening, no matter what, all the time he was praying. So that leads us to our key statement. I will always pray. He was always praying. So these people thought of how to trick the king. You know what they did? They pretended that they wanted to add another law. And then they went to the king and they said, you know what? Uh, um, you, you, we, we want you to make everybody to worship you and not to worship or to pray to any other God. 
they knew if they do that, then Daniel will be found to be doing something wrong because he would be praying to God, not to any other thing or to any other God or to any king. You know what? This didn't make Daniel to stop praying. Daniel kept on praying. And for sure, they found him praying. And they quickly went to the king. They said, yes, something has happened. Someone has disobeyed the law. And this Daniel, he was found praying to another god. So the king didn't know that Daniel didn't know all these things. It was a very bad trick. So the king had already signed that whosoever was going to be found praying would be put in the den of lions. So he couldn't change that. Though his heart was not happy. So they threw Daniel in the den of lions. Can you see Daniel in the lion's den? What's going to happen? Hmm. Remember, Daniel was always praying. So this God he was praying to all the time. He sent his angel to shush the mouth of the lions. They couldn't open their mouth to eat Daniel. They didn't eat him. Do you see why it's important to always pray? It is very good to always pray. Even if there's no problem, we must pray. That's why we shouldn't get tired of praying. When we come to church, it's time to pray, we pray. In the afternoon, we need to pray, we pray. In the evening, we need to pray. Even at school, even if you have few seconds, just quickly just say, Jesus, come and help me. Even when you are playing, remember to pray. Even if you are playing with your toys or you are playing with your dolls, just take a moment to pray because you don't know when trouble will come. Like Daniel, Daniel didn't even know that one of the days he was going to be put in a den of lions. But then God, he sent his angels to close the mouths of the lions. And then when the king came to see whether Daniel was eaten up, he was surprised. Daniel said that God sent his angels. And he was talking. So the king said, what? Everybody must now worship the God of Daniel. You see what happens when we pray? So children, we need to always pray. Prayer is good. Prayer will help us. Prayer will protect us. Prayer will keep us. Even if you have, you know, when we pray, some people don't like it. Even some friends, they are very bad friends, just like those men. You want to pray, they want to come and disturb you. They say, oh, oh, let's go outside. Don't listen to them. Keep on praying. Sometimes at school, people laugh at you. They make fun of you. They say, oh, look at this one. She goes to Sunday school. They'll be laughing. Don't worry about that. Keep on praying. Whatever people say to make you feel sad or to make you want to stop praying, don't listen to them. Remember, always pray. Keep on praying. And God will take care of you. God will deliver you. Even if you get into any problem, God will be there to fight for you. So children, remember, I will always pray. Can you say that with me? I will always pray. Well done. So we want to do this as an activity for those who are two to five can you try and draw a lion and show it to mom and dad and then when you show them try to remember the story of Daniel that there's a man called Daniel who kept praying and the lions couldn't eat him and for those who are six to eight can you write down some things that people try to do to stop you praying and then at the end of it say even if they do all these things i will always pray can you say that i will always pray so you think of those things that some bad friends do and say you know what i'm going to list them down 
I won't listen to this. I will keep on praying like Daniel. Thank you so much. For our la next week's lesson, we are going to learn lesson 10A. Lesson 10A is displayed. God bless you. Thank you. Have a wonderful week. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 Good morning boys and girls. Welcome to Answer Class. I'm sure you had a blessed week, and God is going to bless us mightily today. Amen. We are studying lesson 91, tied to a secure future. Shall we all say that after the count of two? One, two. A secure future. Our Bible reading is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 to 15, but we're only going to read a few verses. Let's take our Bible and walk we'll to Philippians chapter 3 and start from verse 7. But what is were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ? Verse 8. Yea, doubt ye doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Amen. And now 14, verse 14, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. May God bless his word. Amen. Boys and girls, what picture is this? What can you see? It's a binocular. That is it's a binocular. And what do we use it to, to do? We use it to see a far object. And let's see somebody that is using it. Can you see that? That's somebody that is using it. Can you see that child is using binocular to see far objects? So you see this binocular, you can only see as far as possible, but you know, once the air reach the end of that object, it can't see furthermore. But not like Jesus. Jesus can see further. He knows our future from the beginning. And it's all marked and planned out by him. We will learn more as we go on in our lesson. Thank you. In our story lesson of today, we learned about Mrs. Abbotson and her children, Sela, Liam, and Cooper. Liam asked her mother about what was what it was like when their father was still with them. And the mother told Sela how their dad used to take her out for a walk and to play and later bring her back while herself and the brothers will be working in the house brought her back and the dad will help with the homework of the brothers and those are the special moments for them and he explained further she explained further i mean how when they got married they pray to god that they will, they, are, they will surrender their life to God. And they did. And they asked God for a happy family, a family that they will be able to train their children in the way of the Lord, and the children will be obedient to God. And God did this for them. And he went further to talk about what happened when there was a time he was praying, and uh, when he was praying, God answered her prayer because there was a bill for them to pay. God answered the prayer and said to her, he answered her, answered her prayer by calling her name. And uh, she was happy, thinking that, oh yeah, God is going to help her to pay the bill. But you know what? There was something that she was not aware of. And God knew about it. Her husband has just died in a plane crash. And... God was assuring her that he's going to take care of her 
He was going to take care of her. But the following day when they broke the news, he now realized that that was God speaking to her, that her husband has gone and God was going to take care of her. So may God help us. God, and she even spoke to her children and God did. And they can testify to it, how God helped them in many ways in their schoolwork, when they were scared, when they were unable to swim in the sea, you know, how God brought them out. They testified to what their mom said and their mom told them that once you give your life to Jesus, your plan, your future is planned and is secure with God. And he will take care of everything. We will have problems. We have all sorts of things we might come our way, but God will be there to help us. So may God come and help us to learn from this family a great lesson from them. Boys and girls, what can you see on the wall? Yes, it's the journey. It's the plan for my journey from Peckham Church to Bexley Church. It's all mapped out. Yes, that's the way I'm going to take the journey. But wait a minute, children, uh, boys and girls. Do you know that my plan can change? It's subject to change. There might be delay in the transport. There might be cancellation. Anything can happen. But it's not so with God. Once God planned our life for us, nothing can change it. Nobody can change it. Only Him that can change it. But as long as we do His will, we surrender our life to Him, He will not change it. Everything will turn out perfectly for us. So remember our story lesson, our story lesson of today, how uh, the Habertson family, Habertson's family, how God took care of them when their daddy passed away. He took care of the mother and the children, you know. So may God come and help us. But there's one thing we need to do. We need to surrender our life to him. We need to be saved. We need to be reading our Bible and praying every day. Once we are doing all these things and asking him to come and choose our friends for us. Trouble will come. A lot of things might come and we trouble, trials, all sorts of things. Bullying from our friends. But God will take care of us. Our life will be well planned. Everything will be well marked out. And it will turn out for our good. So may God come and help us to surrender our life. Like the, uh, that family surrendered their life to Christ and God took care of them. Amen. Uh, boss and guests, let's look at a few questions. Question one, why is it important to ask God to control our future? We cannot do it. If we do, we are going to fail. How many people plan their future? I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. It doesn't turn out good for them. But when God planned it, he will come out good. Everything will be perfect. So it is important for God to do it because we are going to fail. But God never fails. Amen. Question two. What are some of the things we can do that will affect our future? Yes, there are many things. When we don't give our life to Jesus, when we, are not, we don't read our Bible and pray, when we keep company of bad friends, all these things will affect our future. Not reading our Sunday school lesson and planting the word of God in our heart, surrendering our life to him, it will affect our future. And it will not allow us to go to that beautiful place. So may God come and help us to surrender all to him. Amen. And question three, why should we be concerned about the future? Oh yes, we need to be concerned about the future because we want to go to heaven. Yes, but we need to surrender our life to God. When we surrender our life to God, he will take us to heaven. Take total control of everything for us. Mm -hmm. And he will he will, at the end of it, he will, make us, he will make us happy here on earth. And at the end of our life, he will take us home in heaven. Remember what we read in our Bible a portion of today about Paul? He said everything he gained in this world, he can't then but dung his surrender all to Christ. And God was in control of his life. May God come and help us today. Amen. Remember, boss and guess our um, statements. His statement for our today's lesson is my life is secure with Jesus. Amen. Our lesson activity for today's lesson says probably everyone has planned for the future. Find out what plan you should follow. Unscrabble each word in the question mark. 
these are what that could be in your future write them in the box below the plan will be in the shaded boxes thank you our next week lesson is lesson 92 title the problem shall we put our hands together and pray father lord god we thank you for today thank you for the lesson plant your lord word in our heart let our future be secured in you lord help us to surrender out to you have the primary power as well come and save their soul lord jesus as you help daniel come and help them make us all ready for heaven help us to live a pleasing life to you on this side and at the end so that we can see you face to face in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen that will be the end of our lesson bye bye boss and girls see you children see you next week thank you boys and girls for joining today's sunday school we hope and pray you enjoyed have a wonderful week ahead god bless you bye